Howdy, Zoom fans. Here's another episode of Whiteboard Wednesday. And on today's episode, we're understanding EVF. It's an acronym for Early Vertical Form. Now, this is a really important concept, not only because it's applicable to all four competitive strokes, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle, but because it can make you faster, more efficient, and prevent injury. It takes the stress off of your shoulders, puts it on your lats and different muscles in your body, so that way you're not as susceptible to injury. Without further ado, let's talk about it. Now, as you can see in my illustration, we have the swimming arm. Now, this is the arm that is extended, ready for the pull phase of the stroke. Now, early vertical forearm is exactly that. We're talking about the forearm segment of your arm and trying to get that as vertical as possible as early in the stroke as you can. And if you think about the different steps of the pull and the catch, it starts with the hand entry. So you're starting with your fingertips, your middle finger is hitting the water first at about 45 degrees, and then once your fingertips slide into the water, the next step is extension. So once your fingertips are in the water, you're going to extend on a straight line right in front of your shoulder. Uh, the entry was about 18 inches in front of your shoulder, depending on your height, and you have the extension. Now the next part is really important, and this is the part that most swimmers do not do naturally. It's getting your fingertips to press towards the bottom of the pool. Ideally, you will get your arm to be facing 90 degrees, specifically your forearm, and when your forearm gets to 90 degrees, you have a high elbow catch. And the idea of the early vertical forearm is so that you can get your forearm in a clo as close to a 90 degree angle as possible, so that way you have more surface area to pull the water behind you. Oftentimes, swimmers don't achieve this vertical component of the stroke until a really, uh, maybe 50% way through the pull. And so you're not actually pulling any water if you simply just drop your arm down. So it's really important to understand the steps of entry, extension, fingertips press towards the bottom of the pool, and that will initiate a high elbow catch. The analogy that's always used by coaches is if you can imagine yourself reaching over a log, reaching over a barrel, the concept of getting your elbow to pop up and that will take stress off of your shoulder. Now, if you were to enter the water right in front of your shoulder and then pull straight down, how a lot of swimmers swim, you're essentially missing out on that part of the catch where you'll be able to grab the water. Now, to be able to achieve this uh, early vertical form, your catch is actually going to be a little bit outside of your shoulder. So the extension happens right in front of your shoulder, and then as your fingertips start to press and you start to rotate to your other side and you're grabbing the water, what will happen is you will get to that 90 degrees right here, but it will come just outside your body line. Now, this isn't pulling in an S pattern or anything, you're still pulling directly behind you on the same line as your shoulder, but because your body is rotating and your elbow is up high, it actually ends up being a little bit more outside of your body, but you still wanna think about pulling in the same line as your shoulder. And once you have that high elbow catch, you have successfully initiated the early vertical forearm. Now this is something that's not that natural because instinctively your body will just pull down. And oftentimes if you see a really, really good swimmer, if you watch them underneath the water, you'll clearly see how their fingertips reach out in front, they sink down, and then you have this early vertical form, this catch where it's at almost 90 degrees, and you have a much bigger surface area to catch the water than just with your hands. You might think that you swim with your hands, but in fact, if you were to actually just trace out how much surface area you have with your hand relative to the rest of your arm, your arm is actually much, much larger. So if you get a compounding multiplied effect when you can engage more than just your fingertips, but your whole hand, your forearm, and actually the rest of your entire arm. Now, how do we do this? How do we, get, how do we train to be able to do this? Uh, a few things. First is to practice this concept on land before you even get in the water. Um, if you think about doing a pull-up or any of these other different exercises, right, you're engaging different parts of your lat and the different parts of your back are what's needed to engage if you're going to pull in the proper uh, high elbow uh, freestyle or any other stroke. So think about trying to do this um, out of the water. Just think about having your arms straight and then lifting your elbow up. You're gonna have to actually rotate your elbow 
to the outside or else you're not going to be able to physically pop your elbow up. So practice this on land and it helps if you have something like a barrel or a log to literally just rest your arm over and then imagine pulling yourself forward using your lat muscles as opposed to just pulling straight down. You want to really figure out how in your body you can engage and oftentimes if you have something to grab or just rest your fingertips on you can actually feel what that high elbow is like and you want to be able to practice it with both arms. Uh, secondly you want to do a couple of different drills. A few different drills will really help you out. The first one I recommend is the catch-up drill. There's a few different variations so the catch-up drill is where you are literally pausing um, when your arms are in front you take your one stroke you focus on getting the high elbow catch you pull and you're kicking and then you take your next stroke only after the initial stroke catches where it was in the first place. So you take your stroke, pull with your other hand, place it, pop your elbow, and then really focus on getting that early vertical forearm. There's a few different variations of this. You can do it um, where your hands are literally, uh, your thumbs are touching each other between strokes. You can do it where your hands are a little bit wider, and you can do it where you're actually carrying a, a PVC pipe or a stick or something so that you can really exaggerate how long you pause so that you can work on this high elbow catch. Another drill that I actually prefer the most is called fist drill. This is where you're actually swimming with a fist rather than having your hands open. So what you're doing is you're actually reducing the amount of surface area that you have to pull the water with your hand. As a result, you have to focus more on your forearm and really catching the water with all the parts of your arm that are not your hand. And there's a few variations of this as well, which we'll talk about um, in the drill series. Uh, another piece of this training is using equipment. There's no better way to stimulate your neuromuscular system than using a different kind of equipment. So that way it gets your body out of its own natural skin with a new variable. Uh, a few different pieces of equipment I recommend. There are fingertip paddles. So these are paddles that literally only cover your fingertips. And what these really do is it helps you with step number three, which is the fingertip press. So that when you're swimming, you get an additional amount of resistance on the part of your hand, the fingertips, that matter the most to initiate the high elbow catch. Um, the next best kind of paddles for this are what are called freestyle paddles. And uh, you can go online and you can check these out. We'll probably leave a link in the description. But freestyle paddles are normally in the shape of a triangle. So really focus on the entry and extension piece. And then because they're in the shape of a triangle, you have more resistance on the outside of your hand. So that way when it really encourages you to pop your elbow up and to initiate this early vertical concept uh, much more so than having like a really big paddle. There are really big paddles and they can do a similar concept, but if you're just starting out, these are the two that I recommend. It's also a great idea if you want to throw on a snorkel. That way you don't have to worry about breathing. You can keep your eyes focused down and you can actually look and cheat, lift your head up and make sure that you're getting a high elbow catch. Um, I also recommend using a pull buoy so that way you can cut off your legs and really isolate what you're working on with the pull. Now here's a really quick drill progression that will make you feel like a million bucks by the time you get to the end of it. It'll be really difficult at first, but every 25 builds upon the last 25. Let's go right into it. So you're going to do a series of 25s. If you're in a 25 meter yard pool, this is great. If you're in a 50 meter pool, uh, just do one of, one of each instead of doing 225s, or you can do 250s. So 225s fist drill. So we just talked about this. You're in a fist and you're really focused on catching the water with your forearm. Now the next 225s, you're going to use your pointer finger. So you're going to go from fist to pointer finger, um, literally your, your index finger and you're, you're focused on hitting the water with a nice clean entry with your pointer finger, extending and now you added a, a, an additional point of pressure so that you can feel the water. Now the third set of 225s, you're going to do your pointer finger plus your middle finger together. So now you're in a fist plus two fingers. And then you're going to do the next 25, your uh, pointer finger, middle finger, and your thumb so that way you have a new leverage point in the water. And as you go through these 25s, you're going to start to feel a new connection with the water and you should feel a little bit faster. Uh, by the time you get to one, two, three, four, five, your fifth round, you're going to go from your pointer finger, middle finger, thumb 
to your full hands and you want to have the concept of big hands. You want your hands to feel like they're huge because what happened was you recruited all your muscles to engage and catch with your forearm and now you're opening up your hands so that way you have an additional point of leverage. And back to step three, it allows you to get your fingertip press uh, to be more efficient. And finally, once you've done a few 25s with big hands, uh, the next step is to go a few 50s with paddles. So you're swimming normal freestyle on these, but you're in the, the mentality and the concept of swimming with huge hands. Now your hands shouldn't be completely open. Your hands should be closed and comfortably closed. So don't squeeze them really tight. Your fingers should be, have maybe a little bit of airspace between them, but not much. Really you want to have full pressure on your hand, which means your, your, fingers, your fingers are closed, like a mitten. Okay, so hopefully this is a little bit more understanding of how the early vertical form can be achieved and a few different ways in training that you can work towards improving your early vertical form and your early catch and pull phase. This is applicable to all the different strokes. Uh, it's the most, uh, it's the easiest to practice in freestyle and I highly recommend checking out uh, the fist drill and a lot of the other drills that we have um, at my swim pro. If you have any other tips on how you can improve your early vertical form, I would love to hear them. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so that you can be notified when we release a new video. That was Whiteboard Wednesday. Until next time, happy swimming. See you later.